Though elections feel sometimes like they never end, we are now in a year where one is officially to take place. And the first test is approaching. The Iowa caucuses are less than two weeks away. The New Hampshire primary will be just over a week after that. Three candidates will have the chance to debate again before the 15th, but with Donald Trump skipping the event as he has all previous debates, it will be a head-to-head -head exchange between Ron DeSantis and Nikki Haley. CBS News Chief Election and Campaign Correspondent Robert Costa joins me now to talk about the race. Bob, both DeSantis and Haley, uh, or their campaigns anyway, are trying to bait the former president into debating. A member of the DeSantis campaign said they'd even uh, have it be a sit-down debate if that was more relaxing for the president. Any chance any of this bait is going to work, A, and B, now that the field has shrunk, at least in terms of debates, will it matter at all that President Trump is not there in terms of where the race is right now? John, it's good to be with you, and it's so evident as this new year kicks off that we are entering a volatile period in American politics, and especially in the Republican presidential race. All of those candidates you just outlined, especially those rivals of former President Donald Trump, they are trying to create something out of what has been essentially nothing for months. Momentum has not been there for Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, a former ambassador Nikki Haley. New Jersey Governor, former New Jersey Governor Chris Christie, or some of the others running. It's been very hard to get traction, but they're trying to create uh, momentum for their campaigns, this idea that they can stay in this race, not just through Iowa and New Hampshire, but through Super Tuesday. But to do that is very difficult. I, I think of the Pablo Picasso quote, every act of creation begins with an act of destruction. And they're trying to destroy each other in the process to just get through, survive, and get to that head-to-head -head race with Donald Trump, if that ever happens for any of them. When you talk about trying to create something out of nothing, it's part of the psychology of these campaigns. Uh, you know, people claim momentum when momentum is really just a fiction a lot of times. So in that context, often with primaries and caucuses, there is an expectations game. So people, candidates can come in first in a primary or caucus and be seen as the loser. Somebody who comes in second can be seen as the big winner. Uh, I, I won't go through all the historical uh, situations where that's the case. Is that at all in play here in Iowa or in New Hampshire in terms of how these candidates have to do, uh, or is that really from a bygone era? It's like when you go to buy a car or anything, what's the value of a, a product, whether it's a political product like a campaign or a commercial product? The value, the price is what someone, someone's willing to pay for it. And you can talk all you want behind the scenes or publicly about expectations if you're a campaign spinmeister. But at the end of the day, if people don't buy it, forget about even us, the reporters. If the voters don't buy it, then momentum really means nothing if you're saying, well, we had a strong third place. We had a strong second place. So for Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, for example, if he's beyond, let's say, five points behind Trump in Iowa, it's hard to say he had a great night. Uh, it's just objectively hard to say that. And for Nikki Haley, who's put a big bet on New Hampshire, if she's trailing 7, 10, 15 points behind former President Trump in the Granite State, hard to say that's going to be something that could elevate her into her home state of South Carolina. Would be intriguing to see, does she take the political risk for her own career if she underperforms in New Hampshire to put all of that political capital on the line in South Carolina? No one wants to be beat in their home state. That's right, and, and you make the very good point. They have to keep their eyes on a future Republican Party they may want to compete in and maybe not cause too much wreckage. As the final question then, Bob, help us lift our eyes above the horizon, or at least above the horizon of Iowa. Um, we're in an election year. What are a couple of things that you're keeping in mind that's in your notebook that maybe we should be keeping in mind as we look at this year, too? Assume nothing is always my motto as a reporter. And while it's going to be difficult for DeSantis to stay in the race or Nikki Haley to stay in the race if they don't do well in Iowa and in New Hampshire, there's still a lot of money on the sidelines for major Republican donors. And there could be a moment, even if they, these candidates underperform in January, that some major donors say, we want you to stay in the race until Super Tuesday in early March. So this race could seem over, but races and campaigns sometimes can go in different swings and rhythms. I think about 2012, Rick Santorum had a hot start, then he faded, then he kind of came back and threatened Romney, Mitt Romney, for the Republican nomination. You never know exactly how this is going to play out. And keep an eye on, on the Democratic side. Dean Phillips has so, so far, the Minnesota Democrat, gotten no, no attention or traction, but at the same time, he's on the ballot in New Hampshire and President Biden is not. And does that create any kind of political electricity raising questions about the incumbent president? We'll have to see. And we will 
be with you for all the swings and rhythms to come. Robert Costin, Washington. Thanks a lot, Bob. Thanks, John.